My next guest is a biologist. Ooh, Craig, science, you bet. Uh, <laughs> he's the uh, host of Monsters Inside Me. <laughs> Grow up! <laughs> it's a... It's a new series. It's about parasites. It's on uh, Wednesdays on the Animal Planet. Take a look at this. Dan Riskin, everybody. Dan Riskin. Thank Welcome you. to the uh, show that doesn't have worms coming out of your ass. At least not. Yet. <laughs> At least not yet. Well, you never know. That, what was happening? What was going on with that man there? What parasite had he ingested? Well, he he had Ascaris, which around the world. Ascaris. Is, Ascaris. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's not what he said. He wasn't like Ascaris. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he he picked it up. He was in Iraq. He was he was in the military. And right. when he was in Iraq, he was uh, helping with rebuilding. And he was in people's homes, and they were giving him food. And you can't just say, well, "I'm not going to eat anything you feed me." You just sort of you go with it. And he didn't know he had anything. It wasn't until five years later, and he was home, and he he kept losing weight but being really hungry all the time. Right. And so he was so eating. He probably thought he had something really bad. No, then. he just thought, he didn't know what was up. And, and so he just, he kept eating and he thought maybe it was because he was eating so much and he was eating bad food. So he started doing these cleanse meal things where he'd like grind up berries and not eat any meat and all this stuff. And right. he was doing these special diet things. And then, he, you know, then the scene starts that you started with where he's in bed and he thinks, ah, I gotta go right now. And then he's wow. on his way to the bathroom and he... No, 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 we got it, we got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You get this part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got But it's like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that. Really, and, that? Th yeah. And they're big. Well, that's big enough, certainly. Well. I, I, uh... Oi, oi. Is it? Yeah, yes, it is. <laughs> uh, uh... Steady, steady. <laughs> You're here for the science, not for the double entendres, or maybe you are, no, I don't know. No, you don't the, know. Uh, I came for the science, but I stayed for the double entendres. That's entendre. nice. <laughs> that's how we get you. <laughs> but, uh, but the, 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 so when he was doing the special diets, then did the worm start going, ah, oh, this crap is terrible, I can't eat this food, and then the worm starts looking for better food, and that's how it came out? I, that's a good question. I don't know whether those kinds of uh, treatments actually are good for getting worms out, whether it was just a coincidence that he happened to pass the worm at that time, right. but that, that's, that's a good science experiment. Not you could send thirty, send thirty high school students. You know, get them all infected, and then give half of them the cleanse and half of them not. And we can, that would be unethical to use high school students, but vagrant hobos. Do you have any? I got a few. Yeah. What about? What, how, what's your qualification? But you're a biologist. What then, are right? my qualifications? I am a biologist. I right. study bats. Bats are my specialty. Bats. Yep. Vampire bats. Uh, I did my PhD on vampire bats. Ah. Excellent. Then okay. perhaps you can uh, do. Uh, is it possible for a large uh, European gentleman to turn into a vampire bat? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's exactly as I thought. Yeah. No. Yeah. It, it, the the vampire myth is interesting because you know vampire stories, these monsters that can drink the blood of the living, that all comes from Europe. Right. But vampire bats only live in Central and South America. So up until 1492, there were all these myths about vampires. And then right. when they discovered these bats... They called them vampire bats. They said, hey, let's call them vampires, because they drink blood. And now everybody's like, vampires are bats, and they switch back and forth, because the story's all mixed up now. But right. it's neat to think about the fact that they were different. But they were just named... So the vampires came first, as far as European sensibility was, uh, the vampires came first, and then there was the vampire, the vampire bats. Bat, yeah. uh, but they do drink blood, right? Yeah. They, they, drink, they exclusively drink blood, and, and actually that technically makes them parasites. So even yeah. though they're not little wormy things, they're parasites. Because being a parasite is about the relationship. If you have a host and you're leeching off of them, you know, if you're a leech. <laughs> All right? Anyway, that's the, that would make you a parasite. So vampire yeah. bats technically are parasites, and, uh, and, and people have an intuitive idea of what a parasite is because, you know, we often... Are there, are there parasites that you can pick up around here? I mean, yeah, not, you know, sure, you sure. Like uh, uh, bed bugs are making a total resurgence in the States. It's crazy. Do, I, they, do they drink your blood? They do drink your blood. What? Actually, bed, bugs are, bed bugs are awesome. They're, they go through... They go through, I think it's five different stages, and between every stage, they have to drink a blood meal. So they'll go and hide in the cracks in your walls, then they'll come out and drink some blood, and then they'll go back and molt, and then come back out and do it again. And at every stage, they have to drink blood. But what makes them cool is how they mate, because they have something called traumatic insemination. This is a bed bug thing, where the female doesn't have an opening. 
So the male takes his phallus and just stabs her through the back and inserts semen into her, and that's how they mate. That's normal for them. And that's every single time. That's how bed bugs. Traumatic insemination. TMI. <laughs> It's great. That is unbelievable. I, that's how I feel that about it. That is sensational. Is that why you get into uh, that's, biology for yeah. the crazy, tricked out, sexy perf stuff that's going on with it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's what it's all about. I mean, I, I was in high school and I read a book about bats. Right. And it wasn't, you know, bats are part of functioning ecosystems, the blah, blah, blah. It was bats have enormous balls compared to other. <laughs> if I, get this, if I had balls the size of a bat's, for my size, it would be like I had two pumpkins in front of me. And when you catch bats and you look at them, you're like, that's impressive. I mean, it's just, and, and that, that level, you know, figuring out, you know, how bed bugs mate and what's going on with bat balls, those kinds of things, those are, those are legitimate scientific questions. And, and that's the kind of stuff that keeps me going, I guess. I, I think that the world's a wonderful place and learning about it's great. You are my favorite scientist I've ever met in my life. <laughs> God. Finally, some honest-to-goodness science. That is science. What is the worst parasite affecting uh, people today? Is it bed bugs? Then is uh, that no, the worst well, one? bed bugs are, are very common in the states. Around the world, malaria is the worst parasite. Well, it's terrible. Yeah, it, yeah, it yeah, is, yeah, and yeah, it that. kills millions of people yeah, every right. year. It's like the population of Chicago dies every year Good around Lord. the world. Yeah, yeah. 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 So There's that's, no malaria in Chicago, though. Uh, no, but there is a story of someone getting malaria in Toronto. Uh, because the mosquitoes that spread malaria right. live in North America, but we just don't have the parasite here. So if the parasite were here, mosquitoes would spread it, but the parasite just isn't here. Well, I explained to you, I don't quite understand. So somebody so. in Toronto came back with malaria, got bitten by a mosquito, and then the mosquito bit somebody else in Toronto, and that person was like, what the heck, I'm in Toronto, how did I get malaria? But right. It happened once. Yeah, yeah, but if we don't have the parasite, but we have the mosquito, what, the, uh, there are two entities? Okay, yeah, yeah. So the way it works is there's something called uh, the malaria parasite, we'll call it. Just, right. <laughs> since it's the parasite that causes malaria, we'll that call it that. That would be the way to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Science. You give so, it a Latin name so that people would go, oh, I'm bored. But yeah, no, yeah. Just no, we won't do that. So you take, you, this parasite lives in your blood, and it gives you malaria, and then a mosquito comes and feeds on you, and it goes into the mosquito, and it lives in the mosquito and gets into the salivary glands of the mosquito. And then when the mosquito bites someone else, it gives them malaria, and that's how it spreads. So if you don't want to get malaria, all you have to do is avoid mosquitoes. That's the only way you can get malaria. It's from. very difficult to avoid mosquitoes, and very, and certainly in Toronto at certain yeah. times of the <laughs> Toronto year. Toronto is it's, uh, overrun by giant are you, mosquitoes. Are you, are you Canadian? I am Canadian. I see. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah, no doubt about it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which part of Canada are you from? I'm from Edmonton. I've been there! Get out of town. Yeah, I did. Really? I went, oh, huge vampire bats with giant balls coming down the street. <laughs> you can tell they're That's Canadian vampires. So they were like, sorry about my balls, everyone. <laughs> I mean, no disrespect. None taken, none taken. No, no, so this is, uh, so the, the, this show on the animal plant then, it's about yeah. all of that. A different parasite every week or just? It's, well, every episode focuses on a few different parasites, but the way the show is set up, the way uh, Monsters Inside Me is set up is that it's like a medical mystery. For Can I just stop you, by the way? Is the title Monsters Inside Me? I know, it, it sounds... A bit rude. It's, it, well, it is, yeah, it sounds a bit rude. It does. But it's, you know, it's, it's just about parasites. Okay. Okay. So, um, it's, it's a medical mystery, and then it switches to a horror about halfway through. So it's like, it's like, hmm, I'm not feeling well, and I've really got a stomach ache, and oh, now I really, I'm really feeling really sick, and now I'm in the hospital. And then the doctor comes over and is like, what's wrong here? And, and then says, oh, you've got a giant mass in your stomach, and it looks like it might be cancer. And so you're like, what's going on? What's going on? What is it? And they talk about the symptoms and all this stuff, and then it's like, I open it up to take out the cancer, and then I found this big mass of worms. And so I sent some of the worms to the lab, and I found out it was Anasakis. And then you're like, oh, where does Anasakis come from? And you're like, oh, you get it from sushi. If you eat raw sushi, you can get these worms that normally go into sea lions, but you can get them in, your, in you, because the, the worm's like, hey, I'm in a sea lion. And then, no, it's not a sea lion. <laughs> yeah? You did a little bit of uh, this. <laughs> well, yeah. I didn't... I didn't make this stuff up. Come These on, are real I, parasites. I, no, no, I know you didn't make it up, but I've been to Edmonton, and I know there's a little <laughs> bit of that. You were like, you know what? You know what I'm going to do for a living? I'm going to study bats. And everybody's like, oh, come on, man. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, why not? Yeah, why, why not? not? I'm going to have a TV show about stuff living in your ass. <laughs> 
<laughs> and we can call it Monsters Inside and Me. Monsters Inside <laughs> Me, yeah. No, it's excellent. I'm very impressed. I'm very much looking forward to the show. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a great show. I'm really proud to be part of it because what it, it does really well is to not exaggerate. It just tells you what happens. It's and interesting as well, the audience reaction, because you were talking about a mass in someone's stomach and they, you think it's cancer and they go in and everyone's like that and then they go, it, it's worms. Like, if, some, if I thought I'd cancer my stomach and then somebody said it's worms, I'd be like, who? Uh-oh. Break! <laughs> <laughs> it's only yeah. warm. Yeah. yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. You're right. But there's something about parasites that's very visceral for yeah, people. Yeah, people hate the and, idea. But that makes sense, right? Evolution, I mean, we have, parasites are a real threat to humans. Yes. Through our evolutionary history. And that is why when you think about eating human poo, you feel repulsed. Because that's, evolution's telling you that's not a good idea. Well, most of us are repulsed. I'm European. Ah, uh, that's true. <laughs> Haggis. <laughs> anyway, we're out of time. This is a fascinating subject. Come back again and tell us more. Uh, it would be a Maybe pleasure. bring some scary Tootsie fruit with you. Okay. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. Literally. Don't risk it, everybody. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you. Every time you're, you're here, you're always talking about scary, creepy, crawly creatures. You don't get something cute like a koala bear or something. It's always rats. And, and Although being infested by koala bears would be adorable, wouldn't it? Right? I was thinking about that yeah. when you were koala bearing. Yeah, no, I like the koala bears. Uh, it's, it's all context, right? I mean, are, are, if you're outside in the woods and you see a rat doing its thing, that's different from having a rat run across your front yes, of the kitchen. you're right. It's all context. Well, do you... Do you but what, what, rats aren't out in the woods, though. They're in well, the they kitchen. Are. I mean, they're, they're everywhere. I mean, so when we've transformed, you know, the nature into cities, we've made it better for us. You know, we've heated things, we've put food and garbage all in localized places, so we're set here, and it turns out that some wild animals do even better in that environment than they do in the natural environment. Oh, so right. That rats be, would be well, one of them, then. That uh, would be one of them. And yeah. then you get these infestations, like this show inf Infested focuses on. But that, but I, 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 I don't wish to judge the, the lady in the, in the clip, but her, Good. The, her kitchen floor was very dirty. Well... <laughs> It looked like dust. That was actually a rat. So, it's, yeah, no, it's the the thing is the way the show is put together. You can completely sympathize with these people. She moves to a house with her kids, and you know she's starting out in a new place, and she's excited about it. And then she sees one rat. Well, if you see one, there's no such thing as one that exactly. rat. Exactly, right? yeah, or like, one cockroach, or one snake, or one. I mean, it goes one on. snake. Oh yeah. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, yeah. It's Snakes brilliant. are. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, no, but really the. <laughs> There are. I didn't know snakes caused them. Well, not usually, but. I um, thought that was just an Indiana Jones when he falls in and all the snakes are like that. Yeah, I have a friend who's a snake expert and he watched that and he's like, that is totally fake. Those snakes would never exist in Egypt. Those, that's a snake from North America. Why would there be a rattlesnake in Egypt? He got really mad about that. Yeah, babe. But anyway, yeah. these people. Man, you hang with a really fast crowd, don't you? <laughs> well, I do. But yeah, there's a, there's a family and they moved to a house in Idaho. Right. And. You know, the kids are playing in the yard, and, oh, there's a snake. And so, you know, it's just a garter snake, so they get it out of the way. And then this happens more and more. And one day, this guy finds 42 snakes in the lawn in front of his house. 42. What, what are they attracted to, then? Uh, what's going other, on? Other snakes, I would imagine. Well, so snakes do a thing in the winter. They, they get together in these dens, and then they spend the winter there. And it turns out that this house was built on top of a snake den. You moved the headstones, but you didn't move the bodies! Yeah! <laughs> Exactly. Oh my lord! Yeah, yeah. That's horrible, yeah. like snake poltergeist. Yeah, but so you can imagine, you you know, you like you get this house, you buy it, you move in, you're all excited, you've got yes, mortgage yeah. payments. It's just like the lady with the rats. It's like the same thing. It's the thing. same thing. So what you're saying is, don't move into a new house. <laughs> don't ever. That's the way yeah. to avoid. Well, th that's the thing, right? We think that we'll get this house and then we'll be we'll be safe, right? We'll keep the animals from on nature. the outside from nature, right? right? That's why we have houses to get away from nature. Yeah, I mean that's the basic idea. Is you don't want to sleep in the yard because something will come lay eggs on you or something. Right, like that, right, right. right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's well, why I live in a house. <laughs> I don't know about you. You live in Canada, though, don't you? No, well, I live in Providence now. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. You, yeah. you moved and you live in Edmonton? I'm from Edmonton. Good oh. memory, man. Oh, no, no, I remember. Yeah. Well, listen, not everybody that comes here is talking about rats and cockroaches and everything. That's right. So that's you right. tend to remember the ones that do. Yeah. 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 So listen, why do we like uh, some animals like koala bears and kangaroos and cuddly animals? And yet, like, what's the difference between that and a, and a rat? That's right? a great question. Thanks. I, I, you know, like raccoons, 
Right. Raccoons are cute. Adorable. You see them in the woods, and they do this funny thing. Like, raccoons really do this. They, they wash their food. They'll, if they have food, they'll take it to a stream, and they'll roll it around, and they'll eat it all cute. Oh, that's And that's adorable. great. Yeah, but adorable. when you have, like, noises coming from your attic, and you go up there with a flashlight, and there are, like, 40 of them up there, and they're, they're, they're is staining the walls and there's a fungus growing in their poo that like the, it gets in your wife's lungs and then she has to go to the hospital. Yeah. It's context. Your so, wife's lungs? <laughs> yes. Yeah, and yeah. she's probably just moved into the house and she's is excited to yeah. be there. Yeah. Yeah. Not now. <laughs> right. she's no, in the no, she's mad. She's like, <laughs> But it's context, right? So it's right. still a raccoon. So right. it's all, it, you know, we, we have this idea that nature's outside and we like it there. And then when it's inside, we don't like it as much. And, you know, fair enough. Is there anything that creeps you out? Yeah, yeah. There, there's a segment about scorpions. Mm -hmm. And, like, this house gets overrun with scorpions. And I... I don't want a lot of scorpions. And oh, there's another one about bed bugs. You don't like bed bugs. You bed bugs. No, freak bed out. bugs are my favorite. They're adorable. What do you mean? You should point at me like you don't like bed bugs. Like you, oh, you're, you're the guy yeah, yeah. that does like we all love bed bugs and you don't yeah, like yeah. them. What's wrong with you? You communist? <laughs> no, I don't like bed bugs any more than anyone else. Why no, would I like no, them? No, no, no. But all right, I love them. Oh, you do? No, no, I don't. I don't. I, I've never seen one. Oh, haven't you? No. Well, I'll just yeah. I'll, I. I probably don't have them on me. It's probably right. fine, I'm sure. <laughs> well, there's no big infestation in New York recently. Oh, yeah, all over the place. They're up, you know, five-fold in some cities and all this stuff. Well, why? Why are they... That's a good question. Th that's Again. two, two. Two, two, two good questions. The some people think it's because we, we used to spray with an insecticide called DDT. Yes, I've heard of it. And that yeah. got the numbers down, but it also started killing peregrine falcons, and we like peregrine falcons. They're adorable. So we decided not to use that anymore, and some people think the bed bugs are back because of that, but other people think that it's just a new sort of wave of them that came from northern Africa that happened to be really resilient and tough, and so we don't know exactly why the numbers are up. And what would they travel in? A bed? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Flying carpets. Obviously. So, yeah, no, that, I mean, you, you go to a hotel, you put your suitcase down, right. you sleep in the bed, you right. wake up, you have a funny thing on your neck. <laughs> yeah. And then... Who could that be? Could that be from the... I'm not a doctor. Is that know. bed? I don't know. Is that bed bugs? If I, if I cut that open, will spiders come out? <laughs> Maybe. That would be awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I would yeah. do that. You should definitely film no, that. No, no, I would like that. Hmm. What about sharks? They creep you out? <laughs> I, I, respect, I respect sharks. Really? Yeah, I, I'm, I don't worry about them as much because you're less likely to have a shark infestation in your house. <laughs> but... What if you moved into a new house and you thought it was on land, but it was there? <laughs> Yeah, or the, yeah, the tides could change. What's the, mo what's the most dangerous animal you've been been around then? Oof, uh, that's a tough question. Oh, I, well, see, there's two good ones and then a tough one. Yeah, the yeah. tough one. I, I, I went swimming with sharks once, and that was really that? cool. And I, you've been swimming yeah, with yeah, sharks too, it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But mine, this, my sharks were only about six feet long. Oh, mine were about 150 feet long. <laughs> Yeah, I saw a picture of you yeah, with your sharks, yeah, and they, yeah, no. they were... They no, were, they're pretty big. Those were serious sharks. They were. You were wearing chainmail and all that? Yeah, I was, you didn't have the chainmail on? No, I... Dude, I, you're bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I figure, you know, they'll bite my arm off. It's not like it'll kill me. i just lose an arm. And then if you lost an arm to a shark, I mean, that's... You get street cred, right? As a biologist. <laughs> you get street cred with a nice hat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've been going about this all wrong. Yeah, no, you don't... But, I mean, you're practically a biologist. You've got... You swim with sharks. You have testicles on your desk. I mean, you're... <laughs> you got a snake oh, yeah, Again, yeah. No, are these kangaroo testicles? You know about well, animals. I, uh... Somebody said they might be wallaby testicles. <laughs> did I, I drew that smiley you face did. on they it. You did. They didn't yeah, come no, like no, that. Because no, no. I was going to say I've never seen that on a kangaroo's no, testicles before. The very unusual markings. Aren't yeah, they? that is. That is very strange. Yeah. No, they. Um, the uh, is it kangaroo or? Well, I have no idea, but I can tell you, kangaroos. Um, they they when they mate. There's a lot of competition among males for the females, and the female will mate with several males. And so if you're a male and you want the babies, the joeys, to be yours, the strategy is to produce tons of sperm. So there's so so kangaroos tend to have, you know, fairly large balls when they when they do this kind of a uh, strategy for mating. It's called sperm competition. It's all over the place when you look No, for it. you it just got weird, man. <laughs> It just got weird. I'm sorry. We were doing rats and scorpions and stuff, and now it's kang kangaroo sperm. Yeah. I nearly said something that... that would be, uh, yeah. But that's the game for all these. I mean, they're all trying to reproduce, and, and so, you know, you're, an animal is born into the environment, and then it makes do with what it has, right? And so if you're a scorpion living in the desert, it's tough, right? There's sun, there's not a lot of water. Scorpions are resilient. They can survive for a long period of time without water. But then if you're born and there's a house... 
It's like, wow. You go to the house. It's really great yeah, here, yeah. and I can have tons of babies, and there's no problem. And so then you get an infestation. So we build, the, we, we change the environment to work for us, and sometimes and it, it works, works for, for animals. animals. So yeah. what you're saying is that we should probably knock down our houses. Yes. <laughs> but that'll work for other animals. So you, you never know. You mm. never know. I mean, people have been around for a long time, and there have always been animals taking advantage of us. <laughs> we're done. All right. Yeah, we're done. That's it. All right. Oh, awkward pause? Harmonica? Um, no, I, I, yeah, harmonica, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you play? No, I don't. Okay. But I listen. No, you go ahead. Oh, you I play, play too? Yeah, no, no, right. I'm going to serenade you with yes. a mouth on? Yes. Come on. <laughs> this has never been open. This is brand new. No, it's brand new. It's for you. Yeah, it's to protect you from infestations of bed bugs. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Okay. Welcome, Dan. It's so good to see you. I haven't seen you in an age. Still Canadian? Still Canadian. All right. <laughs> Looking good. Killer Outbreaks is the new one, eh? Yeah, it's uh, it's scary as all hell, I'll tell really? you. Really? Yeah, it is, because, here we go, nature is scary, right? Yes, I it mean, is, You Dan. can't make things up this scary. I mean, a guy in New York comes down with this illness, and they don't know what it is, and then, you know, they do all this investigative work, and it's a big challenge, but then they turn, it turns out to be anthrax. And then you're like... Whoa. Yeah. yeah. That's terrorism, you think? You think. You is think. it terrorism? Is it something else? What's going on? Because that's what everybody thinks about with anthrax. Right. They think it's uh, stuff that doesn't occur in nature, but maybe it does, Dan. Maybe but it maybe, does. Maybe, yeah. yeah. So anthrax was very common um, until we figured out how to get rid of it, and we almost had it wiped out to the point that you could make a rock band called anthrax, and nobody would And people like, would be like, yeah, that's fine. What even is that? Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, when I first, heard, first time I heard of anthrax, it was the band, and I had no idea there was a disease. Right. And Rush also are a band from Canada. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are, and they're awesome. So anyway, uh, so you've got this disease, and then, the, and then the challenge goes from figuring out what the disease is to figuring out how to contain it, right? So like if I told you this guy just came down with anthrax and here's his address, what do you do? Um, stay away from him. <laughs> yes, but you want to stop. It's in New York City. You want to stop an, uh, like a, an outbreak. Right. right? So, so you uh, got to figure out what to do. And quick, so, use this. Ah, yes. Actually, that's a good idea. I'll take a little bit of that. Right, so this is step one. Right. And actually, half of the, half of the episode is just the scientists doing this. This isn't, this isn't sanitizer. Oh, really? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It is, it is. So are you, are you, do you have germophobia? Or no, you no, not at all. No, 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 no. I was just, I have that there in case Howie Mandel's here. It's nothing. <laughs> so, also Canadian. Yes, yes. Whoa. Yeah, what are the odds? Right, so yeah. uh, anthrax is Canadian too? Uh, no. No, no okay, we, right. we're, we're not laying claim to that. Right, so anthrax is, is, not, a, is, is not a disease. It's a, it's a bacteria that is found in nature, and it used to be a big problem for livestock and humans, but right. then we got the numbers down. But because it's a bacteria that can live as a spore, it's the kind of thing that can sort of sit dormant and then pop up. And that's what, you know, that's what makes it so scary for bioterrorism. Like a penis. <laughs> Much like the penis, although not all penises are like that. Oh, I mean, yeah. so Tell me there, about it. There are two kinds of penis. <laughs> only I mean, only two happens. kinds of penis, yes. Dan? You surprised me. Well, yeah, two basic kinds of mammalian penis. I, right. I mean, other things. There's other, other yeah, those yeah. reptile penis. But you have, I mean, you have the kinds that humans have where it's, it's flaccid and then blood goes to it and it becomes hard. But not all... <laughs> <laughs> but a, a lot of other mammals have uh, a penis that stays hard all the time. Yeah, yeah, and a walrus, walrus. Yeah, yeah. yeah have you ever seen a walrus mating? Yeah, not mating, but... Uh... <laughs> But I have seen, I have in fact, Ariel Tweeto, who's from Alaska, brought me a, a walrus penis, which I wasn't allowed to show the on the The penis or the, just the bone? Just the bone, you know. Oh, yeah, well. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of animals have a bone in their penis, which we don't have. Yeah, well, I don't. Uh, <laughs> we, we can work that out later. Right. But the thing is, like, so, so, you know, like, the human penis just gets hard and sort of stays there. But, uh, like, a walrus, it's like... It's like it moves like this. It's got this huge range of no, motion. No, no, no. Wait, there are wait, muscles that attach wait, to wait, it. Wait, wait, man. My dude's slower and we'll put music on it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's like that. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, right. And so, and like, um, whales have that kind of penis, so whales, you know, like, the biggest... Wait, 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 Dad, wait. What is Killer Outbreak about whale penises? 
Well, there's been an outbreak of whale penis. Please, you're not telling me there's whale penises in this show. Uh, I don't want to spoil it. All right. I don't want to spoil it. Really? I, whales go nuts and... Yeah, yeah, no, well, yeah, no, that doesn't happen. I just really think this stuff's interesting. Yeah, so it you is get, interesting, yeah. Dan. It's more interesting when you come here with your knowledge of the, <laughs> of the, of the whale penis and the killer outbreaks. But tell well, me about... it would be more interesting if I had a whale's penis with me, but no, I don't. No, no, so. no, Dan, I'm interested in you with or without your giant penis. <laughs> Uh, if I had a nickel for every yeah. time somebody said that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, the killer outbreaks, there's anthrax, what other killer outbreaks? Uh, okay, so there's a, a little girl who, uh, uh, she's okay in the end, but she, right. she falls ill with this weird, like these lesions on her skin, and it at first looks like smallpox. Aye. And they're like, we wiped out small, smallpox in 1979, so... Right what's going on and it turns out in the end that it's actually a relative of smallpox not chicken pox which right. a lot of people get but something called monkey pox monkey pox which is sort of like an intermediate between chicken pox which isn't that bad and smallpox which is very 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 bad very bad yeah um but anyway and so then the mystery becomes well how did you get monkey pox you know i think she's in, i can't remember i think it's colorado or something like that right how does she get this and so then all the monkeys in colorado are usually <laughs> clean right they're right. clean monkeys they're clean like monkeys. Ooh, 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 yeah they just they say, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 they're good. <laughs> exactly. Hi. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, anyway, I don't even know what's happening. Yeah. No, 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 no. You yeah, so, right. so, so anyway, she had they, monkey pox. Yeah, yeah. And, and so what they do is they trace it back, and they find out that she got it because she went to a, um, a like, a it wasn't a pet store, but it was some kind of pet get-together where you can buy weird exotic pets. <laughs> and there was this... Slow down. <laughs> Some kind of pet get together. No, not not that kind of pet. Oh, get right, right, different. Right. This is like for for pets that you buy to have in your house. And um, there was a there was a like a ground squirrel from Africa that bit her and then died a couple days later. But nobody thought to mention this to anybody. Oh. And then it turned out that's where she got it. But there were a couple of other cases, and they were traced back to these mammals. I mean. The, there's a huge industry for bringing pets from exotic places. People are like, I want a weird chameleon or a weird, like, you know, big dragon in my house. We don't approve of this, do we? Well, there's a risk involved, right? I mean, there are all these behaviors that we do as a society that put us at risk for spreading diseases. And that's one. Another one is, you know, flying into all these different cities and airports. I mean, the, the potential for, you know, like 300 years ago, if there were a little flare-up of some disease, it could wipe out an entire village. Right. But now, if there were a flare-up, and it happened maybe before somebody got on a plane at JFK, it would spread all over the world in like 48 hours, and well, it's that's terrifying. terrifying. Yeah, and that's what makes Killer Outbreak such a, uh, it's a scary show to watch. I mean, it's very well done, but it's, the whole time you're remembering that these are real stakes, and these are real scientists from the CDC, and local doctors that are all trying to solve these things and protect us from, you know, these potentially terrifying things. So how Mandel is right, is what you're saying. <laughs> so. No, I, I don't think Howie Mandel is right, because not all back... I mean, we think about these microorganisms, they're invisible and they scare us, but we, we have, like, healthy relationships with a lot of microorganisms, right? So, like, um, <laughs> you, have, you have bacteria in your gut, right, in your, in your large intestine, and you need those there. If you don't have those, you'll get sick. They give you vitamin K, they break down a lot of the foods that you can't digest on your own. Oh. And, and, in fact, if you counted... If you took your body and you counted all the cells in your body, yeah. there would be ten times as many bacterial cells as you have your own cells. Holy crap. I know. Yeah. I know. And it's all over your skin, it's in your mouth, it's in your eyes, it's in your ears. These bacteria live on you and you have like a healthy sort of like farm cult, like ecosystem happening in these different parts of your body and you have to keep them You're sort basically of saying I'm a swamp. Yeah. <laughs> But better. You're more than a swamp because, like, in your in your guts, there's like at least 500, maybe a thousand different species of bacteria just living in your gut alone. Oh, so it's like a whole community. It's, I feel awful. Well, no, it's good. Oh, I feel they're good. there. Yeah, you, yeah, you're giving them homes. We, we're out of time. This is oh, okay. All right. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. But uh, all right. Yeah. Let's. Or, you gave me a heart. Well. Yeah, give me oh, you my can do, own. We can do an awkward pause. Let's, we don't have time for either. Really. Really. Yeah. We do you want to do something new. Yeah. What else? What's the right. third option? No, man. Thank you. No. <laughs> Don't risk it, everybody. We're right, right, right. Thank you. Dad, it's awesome to see.
say you, you I was going you. to say you're my favorite Canadian, but then Evangeline Lilly was here, and she's my, so. You don't have to pick. Uh, no, we're, I, we're not a fighting people. We're very peaceful, so we can work. You know, if you want to love us all equally, we're cool with that. No, no, I, I prefer Evangeline Lilly, but you're okay. <laughs> no, no I, I, I think that uh, no, I always I'm very interested when you come on the show. I was always happy to see you, but I'm worried about your obsession with bed bugs. Doesn't yeah. it make you itch? It does. Uh, you know, it's uh, they do. Once you start thinking about them, that's how they get you. See, this is what's amazing about bed bugs. Right. Well, Aside from a lot of things. But one thing that's amazing about bed bugs is that they're not deadly and they're not, they can't spread disease and they can't kill you, but everybody's terrified of them. They well, get, well, what, what do they, they do then? Well, they just bite you and drink your blood and when you're sleeping. Oh, for heaven's sake. Yeah, nothing, right? What the heck? They're just like little adorable vampires. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, among parasites, you know, they're, they're not that bad, but they freak you out. They're very successful, though, because if they're parasites and they don't kill the host which they feed upon, that's what you want if you're a parasite. You don't want to be killing there the you thing go. you're feeding on, or else the food runs out. Look at this guy. Yeah. 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 See? Yeah. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So, what, what makes... Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, no, you should apply. No, no, no. What, what makes this... Um, what makes the show so... Uh, so tough to watch though is that you see the people who have these bed bugs and they're just they've lost hope right like there's one woman she has a bed bug infestation like she's got her her home she's so happy and then she buys a used bed and when she brings it in the bed bugs come with it well there's, see there's your problem well right? that was the problem bed, but then yeah. when she's got them she can't figure out how to get rid of them and she ends up just leaving her house she just walks away and then the crew goes back, like they film her going back to her house a year later, and her stuff's all in there, and she's like, yep, there it is, but she can't. Like, it just, it's, it just, it, she couldn't deal with it. Well, uh, uh, well, that seems extreme, Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they, it wouldn't be a very good show if they found the mild cases. Right, right, okay, those, no, right? I, so, I, here we go. This yeah. guy had bed bugs, and then he did some and stuff, fine. and it cleared right up. And, and he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> No, it turned out not to be bed bugs. Now, what, what else have you been studying in your... Uh, in well, your I've, I've, been, I've started as the co-host of a Canadian science show, which is on Daily in Canada, called Daily Planet. Thank you. So that's, that's, uh, that's been a lot. So you look at a different Canadian animal every day? <laughs> yes, yeah. We, we have a polar bear in the studio. No, it's, it's, a, it's a general uh, science show about the today's science news. You know, Nobel Prizes, stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You do know? you follow Nobel Week? I do, I do. It's an exciting time. Yeah, it is, especially literature. Yes, that's the one. Swedish that... poetry, hurdy furdy and dirty. Yeah, yeah. hurdy furdy dirty. Yeah, no, no. I don't... Now, listen, I'll tell you, you're a scientist, right? Yes. By your own admission? Yes. Okay. So, did you, I know this isn't really your field, but did you watch the, um, the faster than light neutrinos thing? Yeah. What do you think about that? Wow. I thought, whoa! Yeah, that's what I thought, and I and I never even went to college. Dad. Yeah, no, but it's it's uh, it's one of these things where the, the data say one thing, and the scientists are saying. Well, that's not supposed to happen because that would mean Einstein was wrong. And so, but this is great because they take the data and they say, here's what we've got. Here, all the other scientists, see if you can figure this out. So right now, all the scientists are scrambling to figure out what's going on. Well, see, on. now here's an interesting point because uh, talking about scientific method. The yeah. scientific method, whether you're in your field or in the physics yeah. or anything else, that you, it would be, it's a cult of personality to be worried about a great scientist being wrong. That not that? That, that would, yeah. I mean, like Newton was wrong you're about right. a lot of things. You're right. It doesn't make him a bad scientist. He was working right. with the information at hand. That's exactly right. And that's what's beautiful is you don't see people saying, this can't be right because Einstein said it. They say, Einstein said this and we all believe that. This would change that. Let's figure out what's going on. And if Einstein's wrong, nobody's going to hold it against him. He still was right about a lot of things. Right, right? exactly. So yes. it's, it's not the cult of personality. No, uh, what, but I, I, don't, I don't study the neutrinos. I, I you know, I'm a biologist. I was going to say, so could, I, you, could, you, could you find a bed bug that's faster than the speed of light? Because that, <laughs> then you got some, a time traveling bed bug. You send it back yeah. in time to bite Hitler. Yes. <laughs> but he wouldn't die because. Because I, they don't. You know, he be bite, uh, look, it would at least annoy him. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Well, Oh, no, you're right. I, I, he was pretty annoyed anyway. But, you know, like, yeah. there's, there's the science of neutrinos is, like, I'm catching up on all this stuff from my new job. But, of course, you know, my background, my, my wheelhouse yes, is the know, biology you're the, stuff. the biology. Yeah, and, and flora and fauna. What's neat about, you know, what's, what's neat about biology is that it's still coming up with surprises. You feel like physics would be getting new stuff and chemistry would be getting new stuff. But we're still, like, biology is still pushing back Oh, sure, back yeah. Well, field. I mean, all that stuff at the bottom of the ocean, you have. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, so, right? so, yeah, perfect example. So, there's, uh, there's these octopus. And, no, uh, sorry, they're squid. My fault. Oh. So these squid live deep down where it's really dark. Yeah, right. right. And when they mate, the male injects sperm into the skin of a female. So they sent down a submersible sub to say, oh, what are they doing when they do that? That should be interesting to watch. So they send down a sub and they find a whole bunch of males that have sperm sticking into them. And it turns out that if you're one of these squid, yeah. it's easier to just stick sperm into everyone you meet down there 
than to try to figure out who's a boy or who's a girl, because that would be more expensive. It's cheaper just to make more sperm. <laughs> Which is cool, right? So that's... Yeah, so... You know, sometimes, Dan, you can't even do a joke. It's too on the nose. I mean, yeah. I can't even hand over to Jeff. I mean, I mean, I was like, Jeff, this is your area, but I can't even do that. No? no. Sign me up. Yeah. yeah you okay, here... So there's, there's also these octopus. This, I love, so there's this, something called sneaker males in, in biology. You're going to yes. love this. You're going right. to love this. So perfect example of a sneaker male. You have a, a frog, and it's croaking, and it's, it's calling out to females. And females are attracted to the call of the ladies, frog. Ladies, exactly. ladies, That's ladies, exactly ladies, ladies. That's exactly it. And the female's like, oh, listen to that. It's sexy. Oh, it's a frog. Oh, oh, yeah. Ladies, ladies, ladies. ladies. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. You've been there. You've seen oh, this. Oh, yeah. So the female comes over, and there's another male just sitting here quietly going, like this, and when the female comes over, she's like, hi, and he's like, hi, that was me, ha ha, ha ha ha, and then he mates with her, and then this guy's like, ah, you know, like going to, spending all this energy, getting eaten by predators, whatever, and it's a sneaker male who's cashing in on all the work of another male and sneaking in. So this is one of the great insults you can say if you know a biologist guy, yeah. you can say, you're being a little bit of a sneaker male, because what you'll have is like that guy that hangs out with the cool guy, right? So you have like the cool guys that are doing something, you have that other guy who's like, oh yeah, no, I'm just hanging out, guys, it's cool, and then, you know, if a girl wants to, you know, be with one of these guys, but it doesn't work out. The, he's always over there, and he's like, it's I all think, right. I'll I think I am a sneaker mill. Yeah. yeah. But it's a very good strategy. You yeah, see it's yeah, right nature. You see it's it. only for, you know... Okay. There's an octopus, okay. sneaker male, yep. taking this to the top of it, right? right? So there's a male, and he defends a harem of females. And there's all these female octopus, and he's like, he's guarding them. Right. And then this other male takes his tentacles and hides them so you can't tell he's a male anymore. And then he changes his color so he looks like a female. And he goes in with all the females. He's like, hi, she's, I'm just one of the females. And then he's in with them, and he mates with them while this guy's guarding the harem. That's the most awesome thing I ever heard. I knew. Dad, we gotta go. Dad, let's get everybody. Dan, well respected biologist. This looks <laughs> I like was. A, what, what? This? Are you in the show? Are you involved? I'm not. I'm, I, well, I, you know, I work with uh, Animal Planet. I like to promote their shows. I spend most of my days in Canada on a show called Daily Planet. Whoa, which is on whoa, Discovery whoa! Canada. Don't get off the subject. Uh, what about the Sasquatch show? <laughs> You know, Craig, as a scientist, you can go two routes on this. You uh -huh. can say, come on, there's no chance that there's a Sasquatch. People have been looking. Right. You can be a skeptic. I have to say part of me wants to do that. There's also the part of me that says, you know, a lot of stuff gets discovered all the time. There's a new monkey that was discovered in, uh, in Myanmar. It's the size of a chimpanzee. It's like this tall. It's got a totally white face and black fur. Its face looks kind of like Michael Jackson or Skeletor. <laughs> it's kind of like... It's unbelievable, and apparently, according to locals, whenever it rains, this thing sneezes. And this was not discovered until you 2010. Just made, you come out here, you make moped. Uh, no, that is real. That's a real. That's a real thing. A real monkey that was living on Earth that we didn't know about until recently. In fact, well, like in, well, well, right. so is there a Sasquatch? Well, we don't know. You'll have to watch the show, right? It's called Finding Sasquatch. So right, right. Clearly, that'll clear that yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, it's good to know that you're you're open to other. Well, you have to be, right? I mean, yeah. part of the whole being. If a you want to keep your job at yeah. Animal Planet. <laughs> oh, it's so true. Yeah. Uh, no. All right. So anyway, tell me about the tell me about the legitimate. I mean, the other show that you do. The, well, I work, uh, I work on a daily science show in Canada called Daily Planet. We we feature what's happening in the science world all the time. I get to right. learn about all kinds of crazy new things. You know, random new things. Well, crazy what other videos. New things, what? Well, like uh, for example, you know what I learned on my show? Well, I'll tell you. Tell me then. Something called a hectocotylus. It's a worm, a parasitic worm, that was found inside a female octopus. What? I know. But then it turned out it wasn't actually a worm. It was a broken off penis from a male octopus. And they named it as a species, but it turned out it was just a broken penis. And now the hectocotylus is what you call... So that's pretty cool. So that's what you call a broken penis is a hectocotylus? Yeah. <laughs> It's what you call an octopus's penis. Hectocotylus. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm dead serious. That's real science. <laughs> no, it just sounds like gross, weird. Ooh! Man. That's what science is, yeah, that's Craig. True. That's yeah, the yeah. What about bugs? I always associate with yeah, bugs. Yeah, we, you, bugs, you a lot we of... got Yeah, a lot of... I mean, I kind of... You know, every time I what come What is that here, ring? That is so gay. I... Well... <laughs> 
I don't know. My husband likes it. Yeah, well, <laughs> just kidding. I have a wife. But anyway, I, I thought it was funny. Anyway, I live in Canada. You can do that. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I'm California, actually. Every time. Yeah, and that's great. No hate. Yeah, no hate. <laughs> Every yeah. time I come on here, we end up talking about penises, and I think it's because no, I was, you started it, man. I, I, yeah. I, I was like, I was saying, like, hey, what's the deal with the giant monkey pr program? And you're like, oh, let me tell you about the inside you know, octopus penis. There's one thing: if Sasquatch exists, we're pretty sure the males have penises. Well, and yeah, yes, of course they do. They're males. All males have penises. Uh, is that true? <laughs> Let me get back to you on that. I'm okay. pretty sure there's a biologist and we're saying, no, actually, that's not true. But. Uh, no, no, that's yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the seahorse. You know, you know, speaking of penises, there's um, <laughs> ducks. Have you ever watched a high-speed video of a duck penis? Phew, all the time. Yeah. 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 So a duck, you know, a duck's like duck size, right? Yeah. Well, uh, the penis of a duck is longer than its whole body, but it's tucked up away inside. But when a male mates with so a female... So it's like the, that magic trick, flags of all nations? Uh, <laughs> You know those like those toys that like you go and it like comes out really fast the f toy? Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Well, a duck penis is kind of like that. It, it goes and then it just like in slow motion it comes out like a corkscrew shape and then out the end. And but it does this really really fast because males will often try to mate very quickly with females. That happens in humans. Yes, and that's okay. But females don't always want that mate to male with her. That happens in humans. <laughs> I'm trying not to go there. Okay. So, but anyway, so the male's corkscrew goes this way, but the inside of a female goes this way, and she's got all kinds of blind endings. So if he's like all trying to just get his corkscrew in there, it'll go to a blind end and he'll deposit his sperm and it won't go anywhere near her eggs. But if she's like, I like you, she'll line herself up, and then it goes exactly where she that wants that little to. sexy duck thing again, right? Exactly. Yeah. I believe it's just it's yeah. like that. Yeah, you I like lift, that. You lift yeah. the shoulder. Yeah. I like anyway, that. but then the female can pick. So You, you do that with your husband? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, all right. So, um, well, that's cool. Yeah, I am. I, I think it's neat because the female can, like, even though she'll have several males mate with her, something, some, like, like 60% or something of the eggs will be from the male that she likes. So she's showing a preference for who gets the father of the children, even though other males are mating with her. It's neat. I mean, nature does neat things. <laughs> How the hell did we go on a duck, man? I... <laughs> I wanted to know about Sasquatch, and you, and you told right. me about the big Skeletor monkey, Let me ask and you then what, what? What about this uh, Loch Ness monster? Yeah, what about? Right? It? So it's very similar to Sasquatch. There are all these no, tails. No, no, it's nothing like Sasquatch. Oh. It exists, and it lives in Loch Ness. <laughs> so have you seen it? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a penis that goes like that. <laughs> that might be what they see at the surface, or yeah. that, that wavy thing. No, I, I don't know if. I, well, maybe it's a big deep loch. There could be, you know, it could be stuff down there. But there are these, there are these mythical creatures that people really want to exist, right? And right. like I've been talking to people about Sasquatch, and people have stories. You know, my aunt saw something weird, and I, you know, I have to believe. My aunt saw something weird as well, but she doesn't believe in Sasquatch. <laughs> what did she see? So my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. 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 Funny. It's funny, that's good. Uh, you know, but I think that as biological organisms, we're, we're programmed to look for things. Like, you see the moon and you see a face on the moon. You see the constellations and you see animals in the constellations. Oh, I get that with the Rorschach test? Yeah. Every time I look at them, I'm like, vagina. Right. Yeah. You know, it's actually, they all are vaginas. It's a trick they're playing And And every time I see a vagina, I go, Rorschach test. <laughs> Yeah, you'd love The Watchmen. It's this movie. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, but I think that we're programmed to see things. And so if you see a shadow move, I think there's part of the brain that is used to looking for the shape of a person. So I'm, I'm pretty skeptical. I don't know about yeah, the Yeah, I think you're, well, you're a scientist. I mean, uh, I am, but you got to be open-minded, right? Like 10% of all the mammals that we know about in the whole world have been discovered in the last 20 years. What? I know, it's insane. 400 different kinds of mammals have been discovered in the last 20 years. You would think we knew about them all. Yeah. Yeah, but there, we're discovering new stuff all the time. I mean, there's this, there's this big antelope that lives in Vietnam. Oh, I know that antelope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that Vietnam antelope. Yeah, the Vietnam giant antelope. 200 pounds. 200 pounds? Discovered in the last 10 years. So it's like, what's up with this? I what mean, we're still hell finding new on? stuff. So, you know, you can't, being a scientist doesn't mean you go out there and say, that's not true, because I think that's probably not true. Yeah, yeah. You go out there and you look at the evidence. But I'll tell you, Bigfoot, I'm not seeing all that much. <laughs> <laughs> Very quickly, we're out of time. Uh, 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 the organ Oakland Post, big oh, cash prize. Oh, man, I have been wanting to do this cash prize business for <laughs> so <laughs> long. This is, I've been playing bar trivia. What just time is it, Shadow Stevens? <laughs> Shadow Stevens! It's time for the big cash prize! 
Do you have a Tootsie Fruitsie. Bigfoot pressed in the butt? <laughs> All right, Dan. 50 American dollars in quarters uh, in, a, in a bag with a dollar sign on it. Um, don't touch it until you earn it. Uh, okay, uh, one way to win answer the question. You ready? Yeah. All right. Iceland is in the North Atlantic. Its capital city is Reykjavik. Mm -hmm. Which American state was the first to allow women the right to vote? New York. Hold on, it's a multiple choice. Okay. New York, mm -hmm. Missouri, mm -hmm. or Wyoming? Let me give you a clue. Your first answer that you jumped in with was wrong. What, really? Yes. Oh, it's, no. It's Wyoming. Uh, I'm going to go with Wyoming. It's the correct answer, Dan! I'm doing well. I'm sorry, I got a bit of a Oh, you like it? Yeah, it's all right. And got a rhino? I got a rhino. It's not a real. It's not a real rhino. It's not. I didn't hurt a rhino. It's not hurt, but it was made by kittens. It's a big. Yeah. You know, people think that you know they kill rhinos because they think they're you know an aphrodisiac, right? They're not though. They're not. But you they get that idea because the you know that looks like because it looks a bit penisy. But yeah, penis also looks very penisy. Two and a half feet a rhino penis. And when they mate, they can go for an hour straight, which is pretty impressive, but not not the best in the whole animal. I bet, I bet, I bet you, I bet you, it's impressive to you as a human. But I bet lady rhinos are like, mm. Mm. <laughs> so let me tell you, there's there's a little thing that lives in Australia called antichinus, and it, it looks like a little mouse with a long nose, and but it's a marsupial, and it's just got it leaves. Rhinos are nothing compared to this guy. It's a mouse-sized. They have this most incredible sex life. They have a very short mating season. Right. And. And they, they only have a couple days when they're going to be able to do all their mating. So the males, like, they just absolutely fill up with testosterone. They have so much sperm that it comes out of them every time they pee. They're ready to go. And then when a male gets a hold of a female, mating, these things are the size of mice. Mating is from 6 to 12 hours that they're, they're in this. And then, like, it's so stressful for these males trying to get a female, trying to mate with her, trying to fight off all the other males, that by the end of mating season, every single male in the entire species dies of stress. Everyone. <laughs> But the females are pregnant, so the next, then there's another generation. Huh? So, how you doing, Dan? <laughs> I've been well. Yeah? See, so you got a new show uh, on the animal plant, the kid eating the, the cat food there. Yeah, yeah right, like, right. you know, people have got kids, they've seen that before. A kid's, you know, a kid will go out and eat, eat some cat food. Well, you? that's what makes these parasites so tricky to diagnose. Because you go to a doctor and you say, my kid won't eat any normal food and is suddenly eating cat food. The doctor's kind of like, Kids do that, right? And right, so right, right. It's hard to know, but this particular case, the kid, it was getting really bad, and she wasn't putting on weight, and she was starting to lose weight, and she wasn't tapeworm. growing. And well, they were thinking tapeworm. It turned oh. out, well, I don't know if I should spoil it, but... What do you mean, spoil it? Yeah, I'll tell you anyway. All right, all right. All right. It turned out it was a parasite that you get from dog doo-doo. <gasps> I've heard about this. Toxicara. Yeah, doesn't that make you go blind? Well, it's bad for you. I don't know exactly what it does if you, you keep it, so but So what you're saying, you. Dan, sorry, hang on, I've, I've got a cold. I was eating a lot of dog doo-doo. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what you're saying is that dog doo doo is bad for you? You wouldn't think it, but it apparently is. Well, there goes my diet. Yeah, yeah. I tell you. They don't tell you that at Whole Foods when they're selling those. Uh... This is the. That's what's so wonderful about Whole Foods, right? I mean, not Whole Foods particularly, but the whole idea of like everything's natural, right? Yeah. Because we're like, oh, it comes from nature, and nature doesn't hurt you. Yeah, nature kicks your ass. Yes. Yeah, nature's horrible. They... And all these parasites we feature on Monsters Inside Me, they're perfect examples of that, right? That the nature it will absolutely work you over. But you probably have got parasites inside you that are beneficial too, right? Well, yeah. So this is what's fun is that not all parasites, like not all things that live inside you, are parasites. So. I'm, on, I'm doing Monsters Inside Me. I'm also working on a Canadian TV show called Daily Planet. And we have this big newsroom, and they're always looking for these new science stories, right? You are Canadian, though. I am Canadian. Oh, okay. Yeah, proudly. Uh, you're making jokes about invading Canada. No, no, this is a joke, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. So anyway... Um, this is a joke. No, we're not going to invade Canada. What are you talking about, that? Prepare. <laughs> Prepare. No, we're not invading Canada. You need, are you or are you not? No, we're not. I can't tell. Okay, I'll trust that you're not.
But so anyway, um, so they, you know, like working with these great people at Daily Planet, they're finding all these news stories, and there are sometimes you have things that live inside you that are good for you. For example, yogurt, right? It's full of like good bacteria. Probiotic. Yes. yes. Probiotics, right? So those are inside you, and they make you healthier. In fact, if you take uh, rats that are obese and you take the the gut contents out of them and you put them in skinny rats, those ones will get fat, and vice versa. You can take the gut contents from a skinny rat and put it into a dude, fat rat, dude, and they'll get dude, skinny. Dude. Yeah. Don't be doing that to rats. No, but here's the best part. They did. They were doing an experiment where they were trying to figure out what the different bacteria do, and they said, what about yogurt? And so they had some rats that they fed yogurt and some rats that they did not feed yogurt. What know. did they feed the rats they didn't feed yogurt? Well, I don't know, rat food or cat food. Or <laughs> that food. Uh, so, no, you have to know what the other food was. I mean, for the okay, experiment. But, well, it was a control. I don't know. Uh, they matched the calories. All I don't right, know exactly. Right, but right. they didn't get yogurt. But the, they, they were measuring to see if there were any differences. And what they found, they were like, oh, the, the rats that eat the yogurt, they have very nice fur. And their balls are 15% bigger. <laughs> So who knew, right? But it turns out that... Well, I think I know what I'm going to pick up in the way home. Just a good old tub of yogurt. Yeah, no, I was going to go and get one of them rats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, <wow>. um, <laughs> so, um, oh, well, that is interesting. Yeah. Um, so, but, do, well, go ahead. Well, no, we're talking. No, about, you do it. Okay. All right. So, you know, ball, having big balls isn't necessarily a good thing. Oh, See, tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> and not, yeah, not just for the reasons you're imagining. <laughs> but, so, so they did a, there was a, a, a data set from Korea of like 17th and 18th century where um, there were, it was very common for young boys to be castrated and made into eunuchs who would then work for the imperial family and you didn't have to worry about them having sex with your wife or your kids. They would just work around the house and they didn't have balls so it was safe. And there are these, these great data records for how long those eunuchs lived compared to other people and they looked at the data set and they realized that peop, men without balls live 15 years longer than men who have their balls. <laughs> 15 years! Just seems longer. <laughs> 15 years, though. 15 years. 15 years. I don't know. Years. I mean, what do you think? I mean, 15 years, you, you, you what? You like, Hell no. No, man. <laughs> you like TV that much? 15 more years of TV. Yeah, hey. yeah, no, I don't think so. I think I'll stick with the testicles, if you know what I mean. <laughs> If you get older, with uh, like with that, if you got like really old and you think, like, well, I'd like, you, and then take, and then maybe would you get a nice 15? Yeah. I think the idea is that over the course of your lifetime, that testosterone builds up. It's not good for you. It helps you reproduce, so you need it. But it's it's kind of it's just bad for you over the over the long term. Does it make you go bald as well? <laughs> I don't know what makes you go bald. I don't know if that's a testosterone or something. I thought I always thought it was testo an excess testosterone that made you a hairy body and your 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 head went bald. Or maybe just guys grow out their hair. Maybe. I, yeah. I don't know what the exact effects are. I, I don't know. There aren't data on how hairy those men were, just how long they lived. So. <laughs> then it's no data I wish to study. Yeah. Then what are the data for? <laughs> well, we're out of time. We want some oh. fruit. Yeah. What kind of fruit you got? <laughs> well, uh, we got some that'll get, you know, feed the monster inside you. Uh, <laughs> I got some of that Keanu Reeves fruit right here. Yeah. Uh, this fruit can ride a motorcycle. Really? <laughs> British or American? Uh, I think probably American. Okay. This this fruit. You, you don't want to give this fruit. Is it called a Keanu? Is that what it's called? It's called a Keanu, which I think... I think really impressed Keanu Reeves that I said a fruit. Was a bit. <laughs> He's really glad he came here. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take the apple. <laughs> really? Yeah. Man, you deal with such exotic creatures. I thought you'd go for yeah, something that's, weird. Yeah, that's why I know to go for the ones that I'm not so scared Oh, of. all right. How are things going in Canada, all right? Things are great in Canada. You it's got any country. guys at the border there right now? Uh, no, nobody's at the border. We're okay, just good. chilling out. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> You've got so much land already. You don't need ours. No, no, no. It's just uh, we had an idea to put up an extension. <laughs> I like Canada. You know, I got family up in Canada. Do you? Yeah. Where? Uh, Oakville, just outside Toronto. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Next time you're up there, you should come visit. My family? Yeah, you should come visit. Well, and, and me. I'm in Toronto. I didn't know you were in Toronto. Yeah. I was in Vancouver. No, no, I'm in Toronto. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a good time. <laughs> We have apples there. It's apple apple growing season. You can get some more fruit for your basket. I didn't know that it was temperate enough to grow fruit in Canada. No, we, we don't have any fruits. Just, <laughs> there's nothing there worth seeing. America just... needs more fruit. <laughs> and now I think we know where to get it. <laughs> Prepare, my fruit-loving buddies.
Uh, All right, we're out of time. I won't shake your hand because I'm very sneezy. Yeah, it's here. too bad. You're not I think I've got monsters living on me. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, I what causes be the common cold? Do you know? Uh, it's a virus, I believe. Is it not? Yeah, I think so. But that yeah. means it's a living Which organism. It's yeah. a, no, you know, viruses aren't living organisms. They're little packets of DNA or RNA wrapped in a protein shell, but they don't. They don't. Um, you make it sound like a taco. You, they are. They're like they're like mini tacos that get into your body, and they don't. They can't live on their own. They get into your body, and then they they hijack the machinery of your body to survive. So they make copies of themselves inside your body, but they can't do any of that on their own. So a lot of people don't consider viruses a living thing. They're just these weird little protein and virus and, and DNA things that take over your body and make you snot a lot. Well, I think we all learned something right there. <laughs> <laughs> Sexiest evolutionary biologist I know. And he smells great, too. He does. <laughs> smells a little bit like uh, lavender and cinnamon. Yeah, and lemons and lemons. <laughs> he wrote a new book, uh, which is called Mother Nature is Trying to Kill You. <laughs> which it is. <laughs> it's in stores now. Please welcome my pal Dan Riskin, everybody. Dan Riskin. It's great to see you. I haven't seen you since I was in Toronto, but I would say this. Did you just get your hair cut for being on the show here? I, I did. It looks nice. Thanks. Well, I wanted, you know, I want, it was special to well, be Well, you show. look nice. Thank I, you. Thanks. And I just want you to know I noticed. Well, I, yeah, it means a lot. Thank well, you very much. Well, you know, Yes? I was watching you when you were getting going about the flies. You know, the oh, Jay Leno fly. Oh, the Jay Leno fly, fly and the uh, and, and and fly. Craig the, Ferguson yeah, yeah, fly. Yeah. Um, there's another fly you need to know about. They just found it in Brazil, and it is the only species they've found where the female has a body part that she sticks into the male when they mate. And it's huge, and mating lasts for like 40 to 70 hours. And she has it in there to get nutrients out of him. Like, he has to release sperm and nutrients to feed her so she can get the nutrients or she won't let go, because scientists tried pulling them apart, and the male ripped in half. <laughs> So those, you need those. First of all, first of all, Dad, so any interesting stories from the world of evolutionary biology? <laughs> Secondly, uh, when you see two animals mating and you try to pull them apart <laughs> because you're a scientist, you're not a scientist, you're just a jerk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And thirdly, if one animal puts a thing into another animal, the animal putting the thing in is the male! No, man. no, 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 man. It, like, it's, it all has to do with genetics and who... I mean, the, the male produces sperm, the female produces eggs, but the egg producer is the one sticking the thing in. Well, and don't the... do that. It's CBS, man. This is more of a... Yeah, well, yeah, it's... Anyway, if, if it's that, it's probably more like a that, anyway. <laughs> I don't want to get graphic. You, well, no, but you've already got graphic. It's too late. Yeah, that's right. I have to say, for a Canadian, you just go straight to it, Dan. You go straight to it. But yeah, it's like giving parking tickets. Speeding tickets. Speeding, speeding tickets. tickets, speeding tickets. Speeding. Yeah. Yeah, the cops get very upset. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I'm very, I've read about half of this book, Dan. It's really distressing, I have to tell you. In a hilarious and enjoyable way, but well, yeah. really... Uh... Well, so here's the thing. I mean, I, I love biology, as you yes, know. Yes, you do. Yeah. And you know I love the quirky, weird parts of it, right? And so mm -hmm. this book is just like all the things you shouldn't talk about at the dinner table, sort of smushed into a book, right? It's like all the gross stuff with the poop and the penises. That's why I like it. Yeah. 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 So what's the, what's the, is there any animal, because you, you don't get really kind of uh, grossed out by this. You're an evolutionary biologist. No, I do get grossed out. <gasps> I mean, that's you do? The, so, I mean, that's the beauty of it. Like, there, there are, there's a thing called a parasitoid, right? And it's a kind of insect where the only way they can mate is to lay an egg 
on another organism or in another organism, and then that, that egg hatches into a maggot, and that maggot eats the victim alive, eating the body organs in the best possible order to keep it alive as long as possible before it erupts out of the dead corpse and flies away. Wait a minute. That's gross to me. Wait a minute. How does the maggot know the best order to eat the organs in? That if is... it, the maggot goes like, oh, heart, no, better not go there first. <laughs> Let yeah, me no. start. I'll start with ass. I'll but, start with ass and then move to heart. Actually, a lot of people don't know it. For, for an insect, the ass is more important than the heart. It's well, I, think, I think a lot of people do know that, actually. <laughs> but no, so, so, I mean, when you hear stories like that, it, it's cool right away. But when you dig deeper, you can find even cooler there's, stuff. There's deeper than there's that? There's deeper. Get this. Okay. There is a caterpillar called a skipper caterpillar. It's a boring-looking thing from Brazil. And it has to worry about these wasps that are going to do that to it, right? So do, the caterpillar, do what to it? They're going to fly in. They're going to lay eggs inside this poor caterpillar. Oh, right, right, right. And then, you know, the caterpillar is going to be tortured and die. And the way those wasps are going to find the caterpillar is by smelling its poop. So, the caterpillar doesn't want to be near its own poop. So, every time it poops, it launches the I'm poop. like that. I'm like that. Yeah. Yeah. Really fast. Yeah. So, it just, it holds still and then, and then... That's, the that's me. I think I'm one of them. <laughs> 4.3 feet per second. So for a little caterpillar like that, to put it in human terms, that would be like a five-foot-tall person pooping 75 feet. Wait, so when their poop comes out, it goes 75 feet? Well, no, it's for their body size. I mean, it really goes, I don't know, like 30 centimeters, 30 inches or something like that. So, but it's conceivable then that if you meshed one of these together in some sort of machine that doesn't exist. <laughs> With a human, that a human could poop 75. This is what I'm trying to get yeah, to, right. Dan. Yeah, I think, I th yeah, that's where genetic engineering is headed in the Well, listen, sense. if you guys are calling yourselves scientists by pulling the animals apart when they're having sex, <laughs> then I don't know. Maybe that is where we're headed. Maybe it would be a good thing to do. Yeah. So that we wouldn't get caught by wasps. Yeah, yeah. there you are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or people from Connecticut. Right. Yeah. Well, the, so the, the, the place where the scientists get excited about this, they were trying to figure out how you do that, right? Because, I mean, like, we've all had diarrhea, but 75 feet is not... Not all of us, Dan. Not all of us. <laughs> Her the Majesty same. the Queen, for example. <laughs> she would never. No, she's no. like... Ahem. Yeah, exactly. And then, she... The poop doesn't even fly out. No, no, no. Her Majesty the Queen goes, ahem, and a poop appears 75. <laughs> By magic, it appears in a poor person's house, Dan. <laughs> So, so these biomechanists were trying to figure out the mechanism of, of fecal flinging, they called it. So right. how do, does it launch? And what they thought, there's something called an anal comb inside these Oh, I've seen one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they thought it's like the bristles of a toothbrush where you rub your thumb along them and then it sprays the toothpaste on the, on the window. But it turns out that's not it at all. It turns out it's actually a buildup of pressure and then a full-on just pop, and then it goes flying. And it's really, I mean, it's... And it's only because of the parasite that this happens, right? So it's when you start looking at the dark side of nature. This is not the dark side. This is the hilarious side of nature. <laughs> you find the hilarious stuff. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. point. Is that is that that's where all the interesting stuff is. Everybody loves to talk about nature as this healthy place that's taking care of us, but really it's kind of vulgar. No, I don't. I think nature is red and tooth and claw, isn't yeah, it? It's indeed. very. Uh, I mean, you're like, oh, mother nature is so benign. You go tell that to the zebra. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right, exactly. Right. right. Yeah. Do you ever get to, do you ever interfere, like you're in the field and you're doing research and you go, you see like a predator about to go and you think, I can't let it happen. I must interfere. My heart is ruling my head. No, but what I do worry about is ants. <laughs> when I'm in nature and I see one ant, I'm always terrified that there are others because ants Oh, there's are, more ants. Yeah, they're, they're never like, oh, I'm just all by myself. But there is one ant that kind of is pretty solitary. It's called a bullet ant. And people say that it has the most painful insect bite in the world. Apparently, the nickname for these things in Brazil is Vinci Quattro, which means 24, because if you get bitten by one of these ants, you're in searing absolute pain for 24 hours. It's about the size of a bullet, and it yeah. feels like being shot, so they call it a bullet ant. Well, that, don't go there, then. Yeah, well, <laughs> but if you're there, you know, like, you know, I love bats, so I go to study you're, that's bats. That's your thing, isn't it? Yeah, you're a yeah. doctor in biology or but something, the, yeah, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but there's ants where there are bats, and so you just have to put up with them. Uh, well, why is there ants with the bat? Because of the bat poop, bro. Well, right? yeah, I mean... It's all poop, isn't it? Well, it's all, all you know, it's a big, magical, lovely world, and when you start to see how things are connected, it gets interesting. And actually, like, so, you know, the, the bullet ant is supposed to be the most painful insect right. bite. But in order to know that for sure, you would have to get stung by a whole bunch of different kinds of insects, right? Well, that would make sense, right. yes. And so I would never do this, but there's an entomologist who has. His name is Justin Schmidt, and he's created something... German. Called... No, well, he's American. German. <laughs> And he's created something called the Schmidt Pain Index. Which yep, is definitely <laughs> German.
<laughs> it's a <laughs> so it's a list of 78 different kinds of insects and how much they hurt. And not only is there a number, well, is it a quantitative measure of how much something hurts, like well, 10 kegels of hurt or something? Well, it's not. It's a little bit like tasting wine, right? So he actually describes them. You know, he'll say this one's fruity ephemeral, almost a little bit nutty, and then he has another one that says, he feel, it feels like a staple going into your cheek, and the bullet ant, he says, is like walking across hot coals with a three-inch nail in your heel. Nah, but if he's a true scientist, then in order to qualify that, he would have to walk across all <laughs> with a nail in his heel. Well, I don't... He's... Well, otherwise, he's guessing, man. He's That's guessing. True. It's yeah. true. It's true. It's we true. have to take a break. We'll be right back right. with Dan Rizzo. <laughs> Fine, you just got to get past that. Oh, hi. <laughs> so, um, anyway, we're out of time, uh, everybody, uh, including you, Dan. Oh. Um, so, but the book's really good. It's Thanks. very interesting. It's, um, it's really quite frightening, though. I don't think you'll ever really want to go into the forest again. No, you should, because the whole thing is that it's the ugly stuff that is the most beautiful part of nature, and it's the, it's the caterpillars pooping long distances that make you go like, wow, it is a beautiful world. It's not just... <laughs> It's not the butterfly, it's the pooping caterpillar, you know? Don't you think? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you get it. Come on, come on.